Blessings and welcome back to Reasonings Right Here at the Trail Life. We're still talking about unlocking our divine encoding, right? Unlocking our divine code. So we have to break free from the morbidity. The very essence of our codes teach us that there is a state of human existence that we are best served living in. And this state of human existence is where the divine presence is made manifest. In a simple man's term, in a layman's term, people say that you resonate on a higher frequency, on a higher vibrational level, on a higher vibrational plane. There are ways to examine what these higher vibrational planes are like. People will say in religious circles that you are saintly, meaning that one can assess your behaviors to be in alignment with what is said to be the highest level of veneration or vibrational possibility that has been recorded within a human being. So a moral and ethical existence wanting to give unto the poor, help the downtrodden, the broken man, helping humanity to better their self-characteristics towards being in a more harmonious state of existence. All these are ascribed as divine characteristics or enlightened ways of existence. It is, it is almost always said that it is a small portion of people who access this gift. It is almost always said that the masses have not this access, that the masses rather are followers of the greatly awakened. So again, making the divine seem exclusive and removed from the experience of the masses. And the fact is, it isn't so. There's a way in which we are as living beings that we can be so entrapped, ensnared within our own fears. Though the ways in which we attract the fears aren't true to who we are, yet we attract them because we, for but moments, took our eyes off the divine presence, the self. Now, I believe that in religious terms they say that individuals who do this tend to have a terminology of covetousness that is given unto them because they are covetous of a life, of a way of life, of a type of existence or a way a person is or a personality that essentially they are going outside of their own reality, outside of their own presence to assume the presence of what is called the other, which in the true divine self doesn't exist. There is no other because all is one in the body of Christ. It is that we are but members of the divine self. So there is a constancy of being present and knowing in the awakened. This is part of our internal coding. This is part of how we are made up. That human life can, on the surface, appear that it's only unto the powerful or the greatly achieved. However, when we re-examine it, we truly begin to see the divine law is equal unto all. The divine law operates unto all equally. It is just that the prevailing thought processes amongst what is called the disenfranchised is to use almost exclusively the lower realms of consciousness to ideate themselves. When the so-called disenfranchised masses thinks of themselves, they use almost none subtle of the divine codes because they essentially have seen themselves as a programmed mechanism to suffer, to bear the brunt of the ills of society, of existence, to be the footstools, to be the residual of progress and divine processes. However, 
it is also clear and evident in Yahshua that the most divinest of presence did not come from the house of the opportuned, the well opportuned rather, but rather from the house of the hard working, everyday man and woman of society, of the living cosmos, of life. He came through the lowliness of a stable birth within the barn, as all the story tells us, of the symbolism of a simple existence bearing the true accordance, concordance rather, of the divine. That he said, and not me saying this, he said, what you have done unto the least of them, you have also done unto me. Now, I'm asking those who can't seem to realize the value of these statements to re-examine it. Why would he say what you have done unto the least of them you have done unto me, if he was not also the least of them? So, is all. That is another code broken. We are not in a limited spectrum of cycles of life and death. We are in the limitless eternal. But each moment of presence is actual. So your actions, though being slow to its grandest manifestations, will surely manifest. And death will surely come to the miser of life. And life will surely come to the preserver of life. Express that divine knowing. My people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Now, you know I'm not a person for verbatim, but you get my point. When the disenfranchised recognize that the Savior is also of themselves, for he hung on a tree, he bared our shame. So I understand sometimes when people say to me, these aren't necessarily religious things you're talking about. I say to people, then you have confused religion. Religion was always talking about the things of life. However, because it is an encoded language, I think the premises that a lot of people believe that it should have been easily understood, but the way vibration works in this reality, it's not that way. If it was that way, our realities all would be on the celestial planes. Sorry, Mil. It's just not that way. So, bastardizing religion, accusing religion, heaping fire upon religion will not get you to your place of liberation. You would not unlock that code. You would be more disenfranchised than you'll ever know. People say to me, you have this aggressiveness, yet you seem to have this yielding. Is the aggression a sign of the world? Is the yielding a sign of you? It is a very difficult question to answer, as I know that this is a code to unlock. Because if it's, my softness is my yielding to you, then many ascribe a soft answer to be the absolute truth. If I ascribe that my aggression is the way of the world, then a very strong stance that is assertive may be deemed worldly. I'm saying to you, these are mechanisms of conformity that has been pre-designed. It is within the codes. I'm saying to you, it is okay. You can actually relax. This is not fatalism, brothers and sisters. I am actually saying it's okay. I know we're in a point where it seems like there is this eternal thing that's coming down on us. But yet still, there is peace unto them that worship in spirit and in truth. Why is it that there's a calamity amongst our soul? What is it that is within those that have ascribed themselves to the eternal, through Christ Jesus, that there is nothing really 
to worry about. Now, I know people might say, is this guy for real? And one of you said this and one of you says that. But I always say to you, listen very carefully. Weigh the argument and be clear. I'm not saying be dual. But did I describe duality to you? Or have I ascribed aspects of personality that people actualize though they are infinite? Is that what I've just said to you? But sometimes I will not just say these things because I think to myself, if I do this, it's almost like I'm giving you my personality, which you should develop your own personality to be your own person, to see the infinite as your own knowing as well, not as Jerome's knowing. So because we have lost the coding in a lot of senses, these pre-programmed ideations become reality and we spend lifetime splintering between these dualities and we are never truly living our divine existence. And that is what is hurtful when we are not living our divine existence. I sometimes see people saying that I think it is because maybe you are grown in a certain kind of a culture and maybe your culture have taught you something because I've examined this as well too, to see is it true. Maybe my culture has tended to be more spiritual or acknowledging but I can say that the, the darkness which takes the world is also very strong so within my culture so that argument is obliterated. There's nothing special about my culture where that is concerned and it's not something special about me. What it is is that the eternal, the infinite, is infinite. There is not a place where it isn't present. So what access it? I began to show you before how important the emotions are. That when emotions are aberrated, the aberrations become manifestations. So then, why you are saying these things to me is because you have lost a manner in which you can be present and is not disturbed by someone shooting someone down the lane, someone robbing someone up the street, someone plotting and planning to rob your own communities, to rob your own nation of value, why you are not disturbed? Why it is that you feel okay that prior is enough to substitute for some kind of action? Because prior is marginalized as some mental hocus pocus, whatever, but not seeing that the spirit of truth is moved upon the vibratory. The same word we speak into the cosmos through the grace of the living God is what comes to influence the heart and minds of a lot of people while they didn't pull that trigger. So I do not want people to act as if they don't understand why these things are. But if it is that true ignorance comes from not knowing, the Lord has been telling me, Jerome, well, you must do these things. Say these things to people. That's why I, put, I take myself out of it because maybe people might think he might be gifted with some special knowledge. I'm like, no, I keep asking the Lord, right? So because a lot of people don't understand the design systems around and how their mental faculties are reacting with these divine systems, that is how they're processing the Most High. But is that really where the Most High is? Is it that you've just been taught to look at the divine in that manner? And if you truly look at the word of Christ, it goes against a lot of those premises. So it is, it is imperative that you do not sit around and expect your existence to be explained to the brilliance or oratory of someone else. When all someone else can really do is point you in a direction to be able to know the codes, to interpret them for yourself, for they are specific unto your existence. To look at how these aberrated emotions have made you ungodly, unwholesome, live in a lie. So if aberrated emotions do that, then well organized, properly adjusted, harmonious emotion, emotive knowing puts you in alignment with the divine law. Another cold, broken symbol. Stop being so caught up in the wrong emotions. Stop thinking that thinking positive has no end results. Are you out of your mind? Of course it has end results. When you think negative, it makes you tending onto the possibility, the probability. We all know the psychological term that it will never lead. It will eventually lead if you do not check that behavior out to something destructive. So the cognitive knowing that the right alignment of emotion has right effect or has great effect is a code. You're not just shooting off at the mouth because you love to spew. There's a reason why your emotions are bubbling over. See what's the trigger. Because that trigger is taking you away from source, from center. You've got to see these codes. Each generation has the language in which it is interpreted, in which it is presented. 
So it is not an argument to go against governments and quarrel against government because governments do fulfill these ideations just the same because they are made from the substance of the people's thinking. And I know sometimes it's hard for people to process because it just sounds like we just want to go and shoot somebody and rob somebody and do some crazy stuff to somebody. So what is this guy saying? And this is the reason why I find that a lot of people who begin to break these codes run to the mountains. It's not because somebody want to go live in some tree house. It's, it's because something happens when you begin to recognize that people begin to get scared. When people say to them, there is a way unto truth that has been the way from the day we were in existence. It's been from the dawn of time. Nothing has broken it. Nothing will ever break it. So why are you suffering? Why are you continuing thought processes that obviously aren't the codes to your true nature, to your true self. So when we're splintering, when we're suffering, all a person like me can do is say to you, I'm not going to get up there and tell governments this. I'm not going to get up there and say this. You want me to say that? You think I'm going to say that? People watching my channel might say, how oh, this guy claims he knows truth. He should be saying stuff about our government. Brothers and sisters, our governments are created from the thoughts we hold. <laughs> you got to understand these things. The Lord says, for rebellious people, an even more rebellious person will put to lead them. Say, so if you're a Gaga and a Gaga man is going to lead you. You understand me? So the thoughts of the collective is the manifestations of the societies. You think those who are tending onto the divine code is so heavily caught up in configuring this reality. Remember I tell you, a lot of those people run to the mountain. It's for a reason they run to the mountain. It is so as not to interfere. There is a certain, I would say, parity that they gain, which is not to try to do for someone or try to overly influence someone. They maintain the balance. And they begin to understand that, like those traps within traps within traps, they are there for reasons, and these are aspects of our reality because of the configurations of our thoughts, the constant the spirit is and the constant configuration of our thoughts. These are maintained. So again, I say to people, if you think I was here to tell you, go rebel against it, go rebel against it, I'm saying to you, know yourself. <laughs> when you know yourself, what rebellion is there? You speak the truth, cast it what it will. I have no desire to take up a knife or a gun against my brother. When I did not know myself, I said stupid things. I, I even aggressively said crazy intentions that, you know, maybe if I continued along such thought process, I would have actualized such crazy behavior. Give thanks to Christ Jesus that I could have come out of zero. Such a thought, such a aberrated emotion that's going to lead me to be psychopathic. That I could come to truth that is leading me to be compassionate, to realize that prayer does have power, and that I pray for the nations, that I pray for the hearts and the soul of the disenfranchised, that I pray that they awake to the necessities of their true divine codes, their true divine needs that are fulfilled in Christ, because He has already fulfilled that. He hung on a tree for that. And so, this is what I want you to overstand or understand in the English language that you are a blessed, evanescent creature that is created from the true essence of the divine. You are infinite in true nature. You are not this partiality of which your Magna Carta is created on. It is far more sublime and indeed divine. And as such, this is the code that leads us to the presence in the throne room of Yah. Some people look at it purely in an argument like he's trying to say to us, try to be more moral, be responsible, be more ethical, and in one essence, yes, I am saying that. But I'm saying, is it that you're trying to be more ethical or is it that you are ethical? Symbol. So it's something that I would like to suggest that we look at. That instead of trying to take the thing from outside in, is that you are the thing. So know that because the codes will unlock so you will know that it's just a step away from how you've been perceiving things. It's not the mirror. It's your actual face. So... This is what I want to say to you. It is not a premise, it's your actual fate. You create it. But when you come out of your created fate, then you go into your eternal. Your eternal. That's it. It is not a premise because it's not an end. It's not designed. 
you see because these designs have beginnings and they have ends they have life cycles the divine has no life cycle it is it is it is what it is really and as we stay within our quantum mechanics and our quantum physics and how we try to stream step <laughs> through the string resonance to these dimensions of our thoughts it's the same splintering it might be seemingly that it's going out expanding but yeah it will contract it will come back and cave in on itself so that which is infinite has already been to all there's none that can measure its design now I can show a correct measurement of its ambits and when you live within this and not within the vortex of a consciousness then you'll understand we can not escape those who stream step into these consciousnesses these shapeshifters of possibilities these time travelers of warism you know I am often time confronted I see many beings I and I'm often time asked why am I so close-minded I say to them well I'm I'm happy I'm close-minded because um I think I respect something about myself that I've, I never did before that I love you and I don't have to act like the otherness to express that love so I know no you are not an enemy for I am not an enemy and I finally get it so I don't stand with, with knives or spiritual forks to defend myself anymore I laugh because I'm getting it I'm, I'm beginning to understand what Christ is saying I am not fully there <laughs> codes are constantly being broken but don't mean I'm stupid but yet I am stupid you know so it's just one of those things where peace comes in and you let go of construction but that you know that you are all so you fulfill just being it's not necessarily a duty like it's my duty of servitude but that I am that I am and so we express and so these codes are constant in life to remind us that yea all of us male and female he created us and his light is the light of our being the light of our presence and I know suffering stems from something else from being away from that truth and the proverbial eternal gardens is always present but some people are always extricated from the garden so be careful what we materialize what we internalize because what we internalize we materialize and I think I think some so-called wannabe teachers have, have taught people scare mechanisms right in the psychology I am trying to get out of the accusatory mode but still forgive me these few moments but I still do it I am particularly appealing to them that I know in your true essence you feel it's truth that you are bringing but I think you are forming behaviors which I have previously said to you that I think I've come to understand is not healthy and in knowing that you know these things and yet persist in trying to create a persona that you know is not healthy it to me is counterproductive and you are doing more harm than good so I just want those who are shaping these these characteristics and these behaviors to to really see what you're doing and I know you are well studied and considered a gift because that's how we all are and the essence of how you've expressed your gift is uh, through this manner you know and um, so I'm thinking that we need to be very more very much more cautious in how we deal with um, people we see have these different cognitive perceptions of reality and um, you know calm down with the control mechanisms and um, you know it, it, it you are the ones that are pushing this reality so I would suggest that you examine the flaws in it and the loopholes right because you need some <laughs> because you are basically making people morbid uncaring and dishonorable so however brilliant one might feel to see that your thoughts have carved itself into the the actuality of beings it is still unbalanced and just untenable right and um, especially because div divine beings of 